Hi Cyclones, uh, my name is Grace Wolf and I'm the academic coach um, in the Academic Success Center and I'm here today um, with my dog Bo uh, to teach you all a little bit more about how you can regularly study during this online education period and a routine that you can use um, to hold yourself accountable while trying to learn the material from home. Um, so I'm actually going to have my special guest Bo leave just because I know he wouldn't help us stay focused um, because his attention span lasts for about 10 seconds. So Bo, say hi to all the Cyclones watching and thanks for joining us today. All right, so now that Bo has left us, we're going to get back to business um, and talk about the study cycle. So on my screen, you should be able to see um, the study cycle here in the center. Um, so this is a useful resource when thinking about how you can study on a regular basis. Um, lots of times it's really easy to fall into the trap of attending class, completing homework assignments, and then studying a day or two before the exam. But that's not really an effective way of learning the material, um, nor is it going to help you hold yourself accountable to study on a regular basis for your classes. So um, to begin with, the cycle starts off with the first step, which is to preview. So previewing is literally just taking 10 to 15 minutes before your lecture or before watching lecture videos now um, and spending time looking through what you're going to be talking about or learning about while you're attending class. Um, so you can do this by skimming the chapter. Um, hopefully your instructors have listed out the different chapters that are going to be covered um, before you attend class. You can also use online notes that maybe instructors have provided for you as well. Um, some students choose to take notes during this time period and maybe start off their notes. Some use this time to fill out note cards um, and start to put new terms um, or equations or things that they know that they will need to memorize um, before even attending class. Really the purpose of previewing before you attend class is to make sure that you are no longer being introduced to it for the first time during class and it becomes more of an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the topics while you're listening to your instructors. Um, you're able to make a little bit more sense of the material if you've seen those words, equations, um, or new concepts before. And so again, it's just a quick 10 to 15 minutes. Um, some students choose to do this the night before class. Um, you can also do it like right up before actually attending the lecture or even in between your classes as well. So the next step of the cycle is to actually attend class, which is step two. I'm circling that with my um, cursor, if you can see that. Um, so it's important while you're going to class um, to make sure that you're paying attention and participating and asking questions as you can. So obviously during this online education period, this is gonna look a lot different than it did before. Um, we'll kind of address two different ways that this could look while you're learning remotely. So the first step or the first option potentially would be that your classes are now pre-recorded um, and that you're watching them by yourselves at home. Um, so if that's the case, try to create the scenario or create the situation to be as similar as you can to a lecture room um, or to a classroom. So try to limit distractions. I know it's really comfy and cozy to be in bed all day, um, but try to take yourself outside of that and maybe find a space in wherever you live um, or wherever you're accessing internet right now to dedicate it to just listening to lectures. It's gonna help with your ability to stay focused um, and your ability to make sure that you are staying on task. All right, so the next option, option number two for how classes might be going on right now would be for you to actually participate in a live lecture. So that's where you're joining a classroom via Zoom or WebEx or whatever your instructor has selected right now. Um, so similar to what I mentioned before, you're going to want to make sure to do this in a space that's going to help you stay focused. Um, so again, try to get out of bed, um, try to find a space and wherever you're at um, to dedicate to just school. This is also where preview is going to come in handy. So you're now listening to lecture um, and you are maybe hearing some words or phrases that you remembered seeing while you were previewing and looking through your chapters during step one. Um, so now hopefully you're able to take a little bit better notes. Um, maybe you have some questions that you created while you're previewing and now that your instructor is talking about it, you have the opportunity to construct um, those questions and ask them during the live lecture as well. So as always, whether you are participating in online classes or whether you're participating in classes on campus, it's going to be important for you to make sure that you're taking effective notes 
while you are watching the lecture. So whether they're pre-recorded or you're participating in a live lecture, uh, make sure that you're using effective note-taking skills for yourself. Um, if you are still trying to navigate what that looks like, um, I would encourage you to go to our website, which I have pulled up here on the screen. Um, so when you get there to the Academic Success Center, um, you will want to go to Resources and then Study Skills. Once you get to Study Skills, you'll see um, some options here on the far right side. Um, so if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see handouts for note taking. So we have different note taking um, methods like Cornell notes or T notes, um, but then we also have just some different handouts on um, tips and tricks for taking notes. Um, you'll notice that there are some about online classes and taking notes while you're reading as well. So hopefully you'll find those helpful during um, this online education period. All right, so getting back to step two, something else that you're gonna to want to consider to try doing during this online education period is making sure that you're trying to watch lectures at the same time every single day. Um, so if possible, try to watch the lectures when you normally would have while you were on campus. Um, it's gonna help with creating a regular schedule and building good habits. Um, now more than ever, it's gonna be important to set goals about what you want to accomplish during the day um, related to the study cycle or related to other assignments that you might need to accomplish. Um, and our student assistant, Aubrey, will actually be talking about that in our second video that's coming out this week. Um, so make sure to tune back in for that information. So the next step that I'm gonna to talk to you about is review. So that's the third step that I'm highlighting over here with my cursor. So what review is gonna help you do is take the opportunity to look at the notes um, and revisit the material that you spent learning during lecture. So reviewing um, should happen within 24 hours of either watching or participating in lecture. Um, this just takes about 15 to 20 minutes um, to spend time going through, rereading through your notes, um, making some additions to questions that you might have had, um, filling in gaps in your notes. So maybe the instructor was going a little bit too quickly. Maybe you didn't fully understand um, what was going on. I mean, you wanted to go back and try to add a little bit more information. This is a perfect opportunity to do so. Um, so you can use outside resources like your textbook. Um, you can also use um, your instructors, um, other peers in the class can ask them um, for additional information to add to your notes. Reviewing is really helpful because it gives you the opportunity to make sure that your notes are the most effective study tool for you later on. So whether you're studying um, just because it's a part of your routine, whether you're using your notes to help you complete homework assignments, or whether you're using your notes as a form of studying um, or exam preparation, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that they're filled out well while the material is still fresh in your mind. So it's gonna be a lot more difficult to go back and use your notes as a study tool um, a week down the road and then to realize that you didn't get all the information that you needed. Um, so that's why it's important to do it within 24 hours. Um, it'll save you a lot of time later on when you're considering rewriting your notes as a way of preparing for an exam. You no longer have to do that because you've already gathered everything that you need to for your notes to be effective. All right, so we're moving on to step four, which is to study. Um, so lots of times when students see the word study, um, we begin to think that only needs to happen um, a few days before an exam as a way of preparing for that exam. However, in order to learn the material um, to the best of your ability and to be able to use it again in the future, it's gonna be important that you study on a regular basis. Um, so exam preparation is something that should happen um, about five days before you take an exam. However, studying is something that should happen on a regular basis, regardless of whether you have an exam or not. Um, studying is important because that's what helps you actually learn the material versus just memorize it. So studying uh, gives you the opportunity to think a little bit more critically about the information, um, to ask yourself the why, how, and what ifs about the different material or concept that you've now learned. Um, it's important as you're studying to um, include repetition and do it on a regular basis as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down um, and show you all how you can format your study sessions. All right, so the study cycle encourages something called intense study sessions. Um, so an intense study session starts off by setting a small goal. Um, this is helpful um, because it helps you actually think about what you want to accomplish. 
a lot of times it's really easy to sit down and say, all right, I'm going to start studying for calculus now. Um, but when we say that and we don't actually have a plan or decide what we want to accomplish during that time, it's really easy to lose focus. It's really easy to stare at the same thing over and over again without actually making sure that you are accomplishing something during that study time. And then it ends up just being wasted time as well. Um, so to eliminate uh, that happening, spend the first minute or two deciding what you want to accomplish. So for example, if I was sitting down to study for an anatomy and physiology class, maybe I would say, I want to spend the next 40 minutes reviewing um, the heart, and I'm going to do that by reading pages 41 through 52. Maybe I'm in a calculus class and I decide that my goal is going to, to, going to be to spend the next 30 minutes on this one question um, in my textbook or on your homework assignment. So once you've set the goal, you can go ahead and start to begin to study with focus. Um, so you'll notice that they recommend studying with focus for just 30 to 50 minutes. So that's when you're actually going to try to accomplish what you set the goal for. Um, you'll notice that those 30 to 50 minutes, it might seem like a quick amount of time, um, but that doesn't mean you have to stop there. You can repeat this cycle um, for the same class um, or switch it up between classes as well. Um, it's just important to note that our brains are really only wired to stay focused for about 30 to 50 minutes at a time, so it's going to be important to give yourself a break. Um, again, you can repeat this so that way you're getting plenty of hours of studying, um, but try to just limit yourself to those 30 or 50 minutes. Um, so it does suggest some different ways that you can interact with the material. Maybe you want to draw a concept map, maybe you want to reread, fill in your notes, um, do some practice problems. Um, we'll also talk about different ways of studying here in a moment um, after I go through the rest of this intense study session uh, cycle. So after you've studied with focus, go ahead and give yourself a break. You definitely deserve it at this point, whether you're doing English assignment, whether you're doing calculus, whether you're um, working on one of your design projects, it's gonna be important that you give yourself a break. Um, it's also important to make sure that you hold yourself accountable for that break as well and get back to work as soon as possible. So some ways that you can do that is by setting a timer and making sure that you're choosing an activity that is going to um, send you down what I like to call a rabbit holes. Um, so although I'd love to hop on Netflix and watch an episode of The Office because that's my favorite TV show, I know that I'm going to end up watching more than just one episode. Um, so what I like to do as a break is to play with my dog Bo. Um, or to read a book or maybe color a picture that's next to me. Again, set that timer and then get back to work after about 10 or 15 minutes. And that's when you're going to come back to review, which is the last portion of this intense study session. All right, so reviewing um, is the act of going over and trying to summarize in your own words what you just studied during that study with focus period up here. Um, reviewing is what I like to call a reality check. So this is an opportunity to be honest with yourself about whether or not you actually took something away from when you studied with focus. So um, you can call a family member, a friend, um, or just practice out loud um, by yourself and try to recall or explain something that you learned during that study with focus period. Um, doesn't mean you have to go through and do the entire problem again or summarize all 20 pages that you read. Um, it's just trying to recall um, as best as you can in your own words what you just worked on. Um, so if you're able to do that well and you feel comfortable and confident that you've mastered the material or are closer to mastering the material because of that, um, then you can continue to move on, uh, maybe switch to another subject, maybe switch to a different problem or concept within that class. However, if you notice that you're really struggling to explain the work that you just accomplished during those 30 to 50 minutes, then it's probably going to be important for you to revisit it and ask yourself a couple questions. One um, being, is the way that you studied effective? So as you were studying, was the problem maybe that you weren't using methods that were effective for your learning? Uh, maybe you just need more time with the concept. Um, sit down and think about what you need to do as your next step. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, I was going to talk about some different study strategies or show you rather um, some different study strategies that we suggest um, and have listed in a handout on our website. So if you go back to where we were earlier at the resources and then study skills page, um, you'll notice this link that goes to Next Step Learning. So I click on that. 
um, and you'll see that it provides a different uh, approach to learning the material over on the left side, um, so attending class and taking notes, um, and then a way of reviewing or preparing yourself for an exam. Again, whether you have an exam or not, these are great methods to regularly study and learn the material. So this one suggests that you should revisit your notes after class, which is similar to step three, which was reviewing, and try to recite these concepts um, or teach a concept to someone else. Um, if you're someone who's in a class that has a lot of graphs or images or diagrams that are important for you to remember, um, this is one of my favorites that lots of times we forget to do, um, is to focus on those pictures um, or those graphs or graphics in your textbook or your notes and try to redraw or explain from memory why they're important. Um, so it goes through and lists a bunch of different methods that you can use here. Um, if you go back, there's also plenty of other um, study tips um, or ways of studying for specific courses. Um, I'll actually show you also if you are thinking about specific courses that you might want some support with. We do have handouts just related to that as well. So if you go to resources and then you go to course specific um, assistance, you'll notice that we do provide options for additional support in biology, calculus, chemistry, and it gives great tips and tricks on how to study or prepare for those classes as well. All right, so we're back to our study cycle, um, and we're gonna talk about our last step, uh, which is step five, which is assessing our learning. Um, so this is extremely similar to what I mentioned during review. Um, it's performing reality checks while you are going through this. So oftentimes, um, it's easy to trick ourselves into thinking we understand the material because we've looked at it so often, um, we're looked at it right, um, frequently on a daily basis. However, uh, it's also important to make sure that we are regularly monitoring if we actually understand um, what we're looking at or reading about or studying. Um, so you can do this by actually trying to um, or trying to recall information. Uh, the only way that we can make sure that we actually understand it is by trying to express it ourselves in our own words again. Um, this is kind of what I use or I suggest students use as a way of eliminating kind of the oh crap moments that sometimes can occur during an exam, right? Um, so sometimes we take an exam um, and we feel like we really understand the concept that was used, um, but now it's being used in a different scenario or a different kind of equation. And then we realize, oh crap, I don't actually understand it well enough to use it in a different scenario. And so that's why it's important to ask ourselves those why and how and what if questions. And that's why it's important to then try to explain it out loud. So again, find a family member, a friend, um, no one, you can explain to a pet, um, inanimate objects in your room, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're actually practicing sharing the information out loud in your own words. Again, this leads to the kind of two results. Um, so asking yourself, do I understand it well enough to teach it to someone else and trying it? And again, if that answer is no, um, and you notice that you're struggling to explain it, then making sure that you're asking yourself, are the ways that I'm studying effective? Do I just need more time? Do I have specific questions I need answered? Um, that's something that you can notice during um, explaining it to someone else is oftentimes we get to certain steps or parts um, where it no longer makes sense. Um, so write down when it doesn't make sense um, and ask those questions, whether it's to a tutor, whether it's emailing your instructor, asking if you can call them during this online education period. It's important to make sure that you get those questions answered on a regular basis um, because if we save them all, um, right until we have to be tested on it for an exam, we're not going to learn the material because now we're just seeking answers and going to memorize those answers. So if you're now wondering, okay, Grace, this is great. How do I make this into a regular routine? Um, I'm going to help you break down how you can space out these steps for some of your classes. So if we're thinking about um, maybe your Monday class or any classes that you have on Mondays, um, you would hopefully begin to preview. Um, so up here at the uh, first step, you would hopefully preview maybe Sunday night or Monday morning before you begin to watch the lectures um, or participate in the live lectures. So again, maybe Sunday or Monday. You would attend class, so step two, on Monday or watch class on Monday. Um, step three, um, which is when you review your notes, that's when you are going to um, go in, fill in any gaps, hopefully, so within 24 hours. So hopefully that would be Monday or Tuesday. Um, it doesn't matter which one, just again within 24 hours. So you can recall when lecture got confusing and you needed some um, more notes or guidance. 
he would actually study um, on potentially Wednesday. Um, you can use this opportunity to study by previewing notes for um, the lecture that you're going to watch um, and then reviewing things from the previous lecture um, using any kind of study method that you would like. And then you would want to perform that reality check pretty quickly after you have studied as well. Um, so that would also be Wednesday as well. And then it continues to go on and on and on. Um, you can pick and choose uh, which classes you think this might be most helpful for. Ultimately, the goal would be that you would do this for most of your classes, um, especially ones that introduce new material pretty frequently. Um, so another way that you could think about keeping track of this is thinking, okay, if I have um, calculus three times a week, that means I need to preview three times a week, I need to review three times a week, I need to study three times a week, um, on top of obviously going to those classes too. Um, and I would do step five kind of at the same time um, as step four. So that would also be three times a week. Um, so maybe you don't want to focus necessarily on um, the days that you're actually completing these things and you'd rather kind of keep tally or um, check off boxes um, for when you accomplish those tasks. Either way, that's okay. All five of these steps encourage you to actually learn the material. Um, so you can think about um, when you want to do that and what classes you want to do that for. The second video that we'll be releasing this week talks about goal setting um, and how you can create small daily goals to hold yourself accountable. Um, so think about how do you want to start off this next week? Do you want to start completing these five steps um, for one of your classes? Is that one of your goals? Um, and how are you going to make sure that is something that you think about on a daily basis? Again, Again, um, repetition is key and you'll want to participate in this regardless of whether you have exams. Studying should happen on a regular basis. Um, and I hope you all that I hope that you all feel more confident being able to do that after listening to me talk about that today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in contact with the Academic Success Center. Um, you will be able to find our information by going to our website. So you can see all the different ways of getting in contact with professional staff members here at Iowa State um, within the Academic Success Center. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me down here um, and shoot me any questions that you might have about the study cycle. I'd also encourage any of you, if you're still feeling like you need some additional support during this time period, to consider scheduling an academic coaching appointment. Um, so we are still taking requests for those appointments. Um, they are going to be virtually um, through WebEx, um, which is a free service through Iowa State. Um, if you are interested in scheduling an academic coaching appointment, you can learn more about how to do that during this time period um, of online education by going to more and then COVID-19 ASC info. Um, and then it mentions it here, how to access online academic coaching sessions. And it gives you a step-by-step -step way of um, requesting an appointment. Again, if for some reason you're unable to figure that out, please feel free to email us and let us know what you need um, during this time period. Again, I hope you found this helpful. Um, I want to encourage you all to still keep doing the best that you can. I know that this is a strange and weird time, but please know that everyone at Iowa State um, within the Academic Success Center and in other offices across campus are here to support you. We want to make sure that you continue to feel like you can succeed um, and we want to be a part of the people in your corner to help you do so. I look forward to hearing any questions. Feel free to comment them um, or again, reach out and let us know what we can do. Go Cyclones!